Today's topic is polar roses. This is going to be a little different. Um, these notes are going to be a little different because this is a, an exploration that we did in class. I didn't just do a lecture here. So I'm going to kind of explain what was done and then I advise you to turn off the video for a minute and work on some things, try to figure some things out for yourself, and then turn it back on to get, to get the answers. So the first thing we're going to do, I'll do this one with you, is we are going to graph the equation r equals 3 sine of 2 theta and look to see uh, what some of the characteristics of this graph are. So let's go ahead and graph that. I think I already have this on 3 sine of 2 theta that might... Oh, that's it right there. 3 sine of 2 theta. So in polar form we'll graph this. And we want to trace this and the way to trace it, remember um, menu trace, graph trace, and then if you type in zero um, and enter, it will start the it'll start tracing at zero radians, which is what I want to do. So if we trace this graph, uh, first of all, you can tell from the graph that it has this is a polar rose that has four petals, and we want to see how long the petals are. In other words, we want to know what the radius is when we're at the the tip of the petal. Oh, and look at that. I uh, looks like just by moving my cursor there, I pretty much hit it right there. It looks like the highest it goes is three. I don't know if I can get it to exactly to three again. I was there. Oh, anyway, I keep going back and forth. Anyway, looks like three. Now the question is, where is it three? Because the other next the next column asks, at what angle theta is the tip of the petal? So it looks like it's 0.81186 radians, but exactly how many radians is that? So what I would suggest you do is, um, is think about the angle that you notice here, the angle where these petals are located. Notice that they're at 45 degree angle. So let's just assume that 45 degrees is the angle we're looking at, which would be pi over 4 in radians. And let's type pi over 4 in. So pi divided by 4. And look at that. There we are at the tip. Notice at the bottom of the screen it says 3 comma 0.7854. So at 0.7854 or pi over 4 radians, because um, it's what we just typed in, the radius is 3. And that's as far out as the petals go. And then it gets, if I continue to trace using my arrow keys now, you notice that it goes in. The next thing, they, the last question is, what is the period of the graph? And I started tracing at zero. Notice that I'm up to 1.3 radians now. As I continue tracing these petals, um, I've traced all but this last petal now. When I get this petal traced, let's see how many radians it is. Go back one, 6.28. So it looks like it takes 2 pi to go all the way around and trace all four petals. So I'm going to fill in this chart. It has three petals. I'm sorry, it has four petals. Three is the length of the petals. It has four petals. The length of the petal is three. Theta at the tip of the first petal was pi over four. And the period of the graph was two pi. Um, now, this is a point where I would say turn off the video and continue uh, doing the rest of this chart, tracing and trying to figure out what all these numbers are by looking at the graphs and then turn it back on and I will show you what the chart looks like. Okay, these are the answers. Notice uh, number of petals, length of petals, state at the tip of the petal, and the period of the graph. Now the next section asks you to, uh, using the parameters A and B, which were, would be the 3 and the 2 here, the 4 and the 3, the th 2 and the 4, those two numbers that are in a being the number outside the function, B being the number that you multiply by theta, how can you determine, just by looking at the equation, without actually looking at the graph, how many petals, what the length of the petals, and so forth are? So, um, once again, turn off the video for a second at this point, and then uh, see if you can figure it out, and then turn it back on and see if you're right. Okay, number of petals. Notice that um, sometimes the number of petals, if you look at the numbers here, the number, or actually let's do the length of the petals first because that's the easiest. The length of the petals matches the number outside the sine function. That corresponds to the amplitude of a sine function in 
rectangular form. So that makes sense because amplitude is the distance up and down, whereas in the polar form, that is the distance in and out from the pole. So the farthest out it can go when the sine function equals 1 would be 3, 4, 2, or 3. So the, the length of the pedal is just A. Now the number of pedals is associated with the number B. Um, notice that it sometimes we have when B is 2, we have 4 pedals. When B is 4, we, has, we have 8 pedals. When B is 3, we have 3 pedals. When B is 5, we have 5 pedals. It turns out if B is even, then the number of pedals is 2B. You double it. If B is odd, the number of pedals is just B. Now theta at the tip of the first pedal. Think of the value of theta that gives the maximum sine value. In order to get the very highest value of sine in a sine function, we need pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. That's the biggest we can get. So what value of theta would make this pi over 2? Well, if I multiply, um, basically I want 2 theta to equal pi over 2. So I think, okay, if 2 theta is equal to pi over 2, um, I'm sorry, not 2 2 pi. 2 theta is pi over 2, then theta has to be pi over 4. So 2 times pi over 4 would give me pi over 2. Same thing here. 3 times pi over 6 would give me would give me uh, 2 pi over 2. 4 times pi over 8, pi over 8 would give me 4 over 2. 5 times pi over 10 would give me pi over 2. All of those numbers give me pi over 2, which is why I have the maximum value or the, the length of the pedal. So it turns out that pi divided by 2b gives me at, uh, theta at the tip of the first pedal. Now the period of the graph. The period of the graph also goes with even and odd. If I have to double b to get the number of pedals, it takes 2 pi to get all the way around the graph. But if I don't have to double b, um, then it just takes pi. So b is even 2 pi. B is odd is pi. Or sorry, just b or pi. <laughs> all right. Now the next thing I want you to do, stop the tape. I want you to graph all of these equations up in the chart, only do them in cosine instead of sine. And then turn that back on and we'll we'll take a look. Okay, let's take a look at cosine compared to sine. So I have up here on the left all of the, the graphs with sine and then the same graphs with cosine on the right. Let me kind of scoot that down so we can see. Um, so notice they've all rotated. Now, um, some students have attempted to figure out how much they rotated, but it really turns out that it's a different amount each time because it depends where that first pedal was. The first pedal was in a different place every time for sine. But notice where one pedal is always located for the cosine graph. Notice that we have a pedal at zero degrees. There's a pedal here at zero. There's a pedal here at zero. There's a pedal here at zero. Notice none of the sine graphs have a pedal here at zero. By the way, this uh, graph right here is just the same as this one, but I just zoomed in a little bit. So why does it make sense that there is always a pedal at zero degrees? Well, where is cosine at its maximum? Since cosine starts high and ends high, like a cup that starts up, its maximum value is at zero. So it makes sense that the maximum value or the tip of a pedal of the polar graph would be at zero. So what I'd like you to notice here um, is it rotates so the tip of one pedal of the first pedal is at zero radians. Now, the next group is saying go through and make sketches now. I'm going to erase this because I don't want you to see that yet. Um, make sketches of all of these graphs. This is now changing A and B to negative numbers and see what it looks like and then we'll talk about the uh, about what those mean when you come back. Looking at these graphs, you notice that uh, for sine, D and A are the same and B and C are the same. And for cosine, A and C are the same and B and D are the same. So why does that work? 
Well, this goes back to odd and even properties that we learned back when we did trig properties. We learned that cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x. In other words, if I put in opposite inputs, I get the same output. So notice here that 3 sine of, or sorry, 3 cosine of 3 theta and 3 cosine of negative 3 th theta are, are 3, I can't even say it, 3 theta are the same thing because changing the argument to, from positive to neg negative doesn't make, have any effect on the output. Um, but when I multiply the outside by negative, a negative number, it flips it across um, just like I did with a circle. It made it go the opposite direction with the circles. It does the same thing with the polar roses. But once again, what's inside doesn't make any difference. However, for sine, sine's an odd function. So this one's even function. For an odd function, we have this relationship. Sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x. So that means, and that's an odd function, so that means that um, 3 cosine of 3 theta is the same, or negative 3 cosine of 3 theta equals 3 cosine of negative 3 theta. So those two should be the same. I think, oh, I'm sorry, I was looking at cosine. All right. So negative 3 sine of 3, 3 theta and 3 sine of negative 3 theta are the same because they are odd functions. And then why is A equal to D? Well, you can think of D as negative 3 times negative sine of 3 theta. And the two negatives, a negative times a negative, then becomes a positive, and that's what you have in A. Now, you try to say negative 3 sine of theta, negative 3 theta, really fast. It's hard. It really is hard. Okay, the next thing you're going to do then is to do your homework. And your homework, um, page 2 here, is asking you now to take what you've learned and see if you can figure out how to do these without a graphing calculator. So you need to think, looking at the equation, how many petals does it have? How long are the petals? And where does the first petal start? After you've figured out those things, after you've drawn the first petal, then I'm not worried so much if your other petals are perfectly lined up on exactly the right angle. If the angles are easy to find, like they're 90 degrees apart, then that should be easy. But if there's five petals or seven petals or some odd number of petals like that, just do the best you can to space them evenly. They don't have to be perfect. They, they do need to be the right length. They need to have the right number of them. And the first one needs to be in the correct position. Those are the three things I'm going to be concerned about. That is the end. Enjoy your homework.